Museum of the Bible opened Saturday in Washington, D.C. It cost $500 million, making it the largest privately funded museum in the city. A big part of that money comes from the conservative Christian family-run company Hobby Lobby. Chip Reed is at the 430,000 square foot museum, just blocked from the Capitol. Chip, good morning. Shalom, Israel. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rikakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutation to the 144 hopefully elect of Israel who's pushing this word in all truth and sincerity. And the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever he goes. Yeah, I saw this and I, I wanted to do a quick, a quick clip and a new song on this video. Uh, just a quick clip and a new song of our brand new understanding of the Bible where we, the so-called Native American, the so-called Negro, the Hispanics and Native American Indians have woken up to the fact that we are the lost 12 tribes of Israel and these people here with this museum are in fact the devil that this Bible speaks of, Esau Edom, the Caucasian race. And now once again they're spruing lies about the Bible and misleading the people. So in this segment of um, quick clips and the new song, we're going to uh, bring out some scriptures uh, as as I play this video through. Okay. Um, so let's let's continue watching the video, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be stopping it uh, throughout the video just to uh, bring out a couple of scriptures. Okay, here and there. As you can see, this is a museum of biblical proportions. It's one of the biggest in this city of museums, even bigger than the massive Air and Space Museum. The people who build it say it's the most complicated project they've ever done, and Washington politics made it even more so. You're going to have a lot of sore necks in this place. At 140 feet long and 40 feet high, this digital ceiling makes for a spectacular... I had to stop it right there, because look, here they are right here, uh, uh, the, uh, deceiving the people already. This is, um, they're saying that all of the people in the Bible were Caucasians. They're saying that uh, the Messiah, they're saying that the God Almighty, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, is also a Caucasian, uh, someone with leprosy. This is the book of uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace so the color of the messiah's feet a uh, skin was was a brand he was a brown skinned man he was a negro from the tribe of judah okay and his father looked exactly like him okay all of the all of the apostles everyone in the bible actually was brown skinned was a dark skinned race except for esau edom when he came when esau came out of the womb. He came out red all over, like the Caucasian. They're actually, they're actually reddish in color. They're not white because their blood shows through their skin. And they're trying to put forth this false narrative that everyone in the Bible is Caucasian, which they're deceiving the, pe the people once, once again. Let's continue. Entrance, but first visitors will pass through these 16 ton, 37 foot tall bronze doors with text from the book of Genesis. With eight levels of 22 foot high ceilings, the museum is the equivalent of a 17 story building. So, this is the whole Bible from first page to the last. First page to the last. Kerry Summers is the. Did he just say with that big smug smile on his face that he's got the whole Bible in this museum from the first page to the last? But then yet, they go ahead and blaspheme the name of the Lord. They don't let the children of Israel know, because they know that we are the children of Israel, the lost 12 tribes of Israel, and that's the so-called Negro, the Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter uh, 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. That's right. These people are fools because they, they, they want to blaspheme the name of the Lord. They want to be God. They want to make up. They want to take this, the Holy Scriptures and make another false doctrine and, and create a false uh, image and a false idol out of the Holy Scriptures. It would have been better for them just to make up a whole different thing, not to include Yahweh Hashem Hashem in it at all. It says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. 
There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven above upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. And no, not until the Lord woke us up, there was not one. These people want to deceive the masses like the devil that they are, like it's written about in the book of Revelations. So they're, they're, they want to pretend like there is no God. Okay, this is verse 3. So this is Psalms chapter 14, verse 3. They are all gone aside. They are, they are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Have all the works workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. That's right. They eat us up and they, 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 they use us. They abuse us. When our captivity was finished, they didn't say, hey, y'all, you're the, you're the lost to our child of Israel. We, we use y'all. you We punish y'all just like the Lord said that we were supposed to. Now, y'all, go back to your land, you know, and uh, you are the lost to our child of Israel. No. They kept, they, kept, uh, they kept us and keep us even to this day in the oppression they uh, and slavery. Now they're trying to implement the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, in our hands to make us perpetual slaves. Okay, this is the verse five. There were, they were, they were they. There were they in great fear, for Yahweh Shem in the, is in the generation of the righteous. So the Lord is calling back for us, the generation of the righteous. Ye have shamed the counsel of the poor, because the Lord is his refuge. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. When the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. And that's the point we're at now. We're, we're getting happy. We're getting excited because we see the Lord is turning back our captivity. He's coming back and putting the plagues upon the heathens, upon Esau, Edom, of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. Right now, as we speak with this coronavirus, and these other plagues that he's sending forth. He's, he's just destroying this wicked kingdom. Okay? Because once again, these people, they have the Bible from the first page to the last page. But they want to go on and pretend like they don't know uh, that we are the lost twelve tribes of Israel. Let's go to the book of, uh, let's stand the book of Psalms. Let's go to chapter 64, uh, verse 6. Right, let's let's start at verse four. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil manner. They commune of laying snares privately. Privately, they say, "Who shall see them?" So they're making this museum and they continue to blaspheme the name of the Lord. Look, at, they don't want to. They 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 just like the scriptures say. They have the scriptures, but they do them not. Okay. They don't, they don't wear beards on their face. Which they're breaking all the law, statutes, commandments. They've said that the law, statutes, commandments are done away with. You know you know how they are because they are the devil. Okay, this is verse 6. So this is Psalms chapter 64, verse 6. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away, and all men shall fear, and shall declare the work of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, for they shall wisely consider of his doings. So they, they, they make out a diligent search. They got all of these relics from the Bible. They've stolen them, stolen them actually, and they still want to blaspheme the name of the Lord. They want to lie on, the, on what the Bible is actually saying. Okay? Let's get one more, y'all. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 50, uh, verse 16. But unto the wicked, Yahweh Shema Shah said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or what, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? And that, that's exactly what they're doing now. They, they've taken the Bible um, and put it on themselves as if they are the Lord's chosen people as well. Over there, they stolen the land of Israel. They stolen our heritage. They put all Caucasian people in the Bible as this, as if it's speaking of them, you know. But the Lord said, "What right do you have to do to declare my statutes? See, if, seeing that thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee, because they they don't they don't do the, they don't do anything that the Bible says. They they continue in their pagan uh, holidays." 
Okay, where's the Sabbath day? The man don't even have no beard on his face. Just straight away, you know. Just and that's just to name a few. Let's continue with the with the video. Museum's president. We wanted something close to the mall. We didn't pick this building, unlike some have said, because we're close to the Capitol. Some 51,000 donors contributed to the construction of the museum, but the largest and most controversial donor is Hobby Lobby, the arts and crafts chain founded by the conservative Christian Green family. This is not the Steve Green muse Museum of the Bible. It's not. Steve Green is the president of Hobby Lobby, which has amassed over 40,000 ancient biblical artifacts, one of the largest private biblical collections in the world. About a thousand of them, from Dead Sea Scrolls to Bibles over a thousand years old, will be on display here. The collection itself has been the subject of controversy. This summer, Hobby Lobby agreed to forfeit thousands of pieces from its collection and pay $3 million after it was discovered the items had been smuggled into the U.S. from the Middle East. Once again, there you go. They all up in other people's country taking things that don't belong to them. This is the book of uh, Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 5. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy I have spoken against the residue of the heathen. The heathen are the e Esau, Edom, and all the other nations. If you're not a, a, a Negro, Hispanic, or a Native American Indian, the lost twelve tribes of Israel, then you are a heathen. Residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart with the spiteful minds to cast it out for a prey they stolen our land man and now they're taking look they're taking all the stuff out of it they're taking off all the relics of the bible you know and throwing up in some museum so they can make merchandise of it okay uh this is the book of obadiah chapter uh one verse three the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee Thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that said in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and thou, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, said Yahweh Shimei Shai. So right now the Lord is bringing down these uh, devils, Esau, Edom, for all these things that they've done. Once they, okay, this is verse five. If these came to thee. If robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gather come to, to thee, would they not leave some grapes? But no, not these devils. They got to take all. You see, this big 17-story museum of Bible relics that they have stolen from the Holy Land. Let's continue with the video. Obviously, mistakes happened, and uh, we were willing to pay the fine. Green insists that the museum does not approach the Bible from a particular viewpoint. The U.S. Capitol is over your shoulder. Some there you go. Not, he, don't, he don't view the Bible from one particular viewpoint, but then the Messiah say, there's only one way. He is the door, but that's because they're lying. They've created a whole false doctrine off of the Holy Scriptures. The Bible that belongs only to the lost 12 tribes of Israel, not these other nations. Salvation is all the Jews, man. People have said the goal here is to knock down that wall between church and state. Anything to that? Well, no, because I think there is a separate role for the church and the state, and it's not the state's role to espouse a faith. You have said that Americans are as ignorant of the Bible now as they have ever been. Yeah, he's, he's got that right. Uh, everyone has never been as ignorant of the Bible as now because back in the days of old all the nations actually feared the Lord after he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt but now we're back right back at it because the devil has been been on the earth to deceive once again and then they're still doing it right now that's why he's out here building this museum uh, falsifying all the documents twisting the words of the Bible um, putting up these false images of Yahweh al Shai, but not no more, because we're out here, the Lord's put the Spirit upon the lost twelve tribes of Israel, uh, starting with the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, to bring out the 100% truth of the Bible, and prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. So he said, he he is the Lord and he changed not. That's what that means. His words does not change. But even though they want to twist them around, 
they, they, you know what? It's, it's over for that because the end is near. Uh, this is the book of um, First Chronicles, chapter sixteen, verse twenty. And when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another, people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, "Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm." So that's why the Lord has a chosen people, and He's sent telling to all these other heathen nations. Hey, the time will come and y'all ain't going to be messing with the children of Israel no more. That's the so-called Negro, the Hispanics, and the Native American Indians, man. Let's jump over to 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 34. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever. He say ye, save us, and say ye, save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen. Which are all these other nations, the Esau, Edom, all of them, the Japanese, Chinese people, they have no right to this salvation that they're trying to squeeze themselves into with this false doctrine that they're pushing. That we may give thanks to the holy, to thy holy name and glory in, in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people say, Amen, and praise you, how about Shema Shai? That's right, he's the God of Israel, not the other nations, man. Let's continue to get some more information. So this is the book of uh, Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. It says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. Okay? Okay, he has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. And he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. And this word is coming out uh, from the mouth of his holy prophet, starting with the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. We're going to go back to the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 96, just to put, put, uh, put this point to bed. Verse 5, it says, For all the gods of the nations are idols. So all the other nations, their gods are idols, which is Esau, Edom is included in that with their false god and false idol, so-called name Jesus Christ, because we read what the Messiah actually looks like. He's a brown-skinned man, and he is the God of Israel, as you have heard. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. The one true living God, the one that actually made us and made everything around us, he's the God of Israel, man. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. This is some, this is some great this is some great information because the Lord said, "Hey, I change not." But they want to change and twist the scriptures because that's their job. Because they are the devil that the Bible speaks of in the book of uh, Revelation when they say he's going to come down and deceive the nations. But let's get some more. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 47. It says, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto you, how about Shema Shai, with the voice of a trumpet. For the Lord most high is terrible. That's right. He's terrible, man. He's greatly to be feared. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. Okay, so all the nations are going to be under our feet in the kingdom of heaven. That's why it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Because his will is not being done right now. It's the, because the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Esau, Edom, they're spewing all these lies and going uh, contrary to the word of the Lord. So when he comes, he's going to subdue all these other nations and all these heathen heathens and they're going to be our slaves in the kingdom of heaven that's it man that's the truth of the bible let's read this again this book of psalms chapter 47 verse 3 he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet he shall choose our inheritance for us the excellence of jacob whom he loved selah it says yahweh shim yashai is gone up with a shout the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to the Lord. Sing praises. Sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. That's right. And that's what we're doing now. Bringing out the understanding of the Bible. God reigneth over the heathen. He reigneth over the heathen. Okay. God sitteth upon the thrones of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together. Even the people of God. Of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. And that's talking about the children of Israel are the people, his chosen people. So uh, just, we just got one more scripture to bring out, and then we're going to let the rest of this clip play. That'll be the end of it, man. Um, 
But you know, looking at these guys, they they're gonna be in trouble with you. How about Shima Ashai? And it reminds me of that that movie, The Sixth Sense. The Sixth Sense, when that when that little boy said, "I see dead people." Yeah, that's what I, I see that too. Because y'all y'all in trouble, man, for what you done did to the children of Israel, the Lord's apple of His eye. Okay, and all the blaspheme that you've done. This is the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter twenty-three. Verse 1, it says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor. Say, you how about Shemel Shai? Therefore, thus said the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. Say, you how about Shemel Shai? So y'all continue to push on with these lies and blaspheme the name of the Lord and um, corrupt his chosen people. Uh, trying to push uh, them to eat pork, crab, shrimp, and lobster to go against the words of the Bible. You try to make them uh, women wear pants, put the women over the men, uh, make them win, men wear dresses, all kind of things, you know. Uh, forget about the Sabbath day, forget who the Lord actually is, forget that they're the children of Israel. The Lord has got a great judgment for this place, this wicked place. So, hope this uh, lesson was edifying. And, um, yeah, oh yeah, one more thing. Look at this dude here. We got to get this dude talking about, hold on, we, I'm going to let it play and I'm going to stop it one more time before I close it out. I believe that they are. And I think primarily because we don't teach it in our schools as we once did. You get to learn history through seeing it, feeling it, and it's just amazing. There is a higher calling here to cutting edge technology and special effects. This is so cool. Because... Hop aboard the Flyboard Theater and experience the sensation of flying through Washington, D.C. Indeed, I tremble for my country. View the scripture passages inscribed on federal buildings. It's awesome to see the influence that Christianity has had in this country. The museum. Yeah. Uh-huh, you see, now that's what I want to play. That's a so-called Jake right there. He could be one of the lost twelve tribes of Israel. That's what he looks like, a, African, a so-called African-American who doesn't even know that he's an Israelite. Talking about it's awesome to see uh, the influence that Christianity have had in this country. And that's how they're scattering the flock. They're not letting us know that we are the lost twelve tribes of Israel. They're producing all these lies. And that's, a, that's, a, that's one lost brother. And he's himself seeing the influence that Christianity has on this country which is a bunch of BS and not the truth of the Bible with his clean shaven face. I like I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutation to the 144, hopefully elect of Israel who's pushing his word in all truth and sincerity and the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever he goes. Shalom Israel. Miriam invites you to walk through the history of the Bible. The olive trees in this village of Nazareth are modeled after the biblical garden of Gethsemane. You believe the Bible is good for the world? Yeah, I do. It's the good and the bad and the ugly. And then you make up your own mind. Some critics on the left say this museum will be full of evangelical propaganda, but some evangelicals say there's not enough about Jesus in this museum. The people behind the museum say if they're being criticized on the left and the right, they must be right in the middle, right where they want to be. Gail? Well, you learn you can't please everybody. Chip, you, Chip we thank you. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to let them get the last word and pr pr promote these lies, okay? So... Hey, you don't uh, make up your own. You don't make up your own mind. Also, this is only for the House of Israel, the so-called Negro, the Hispanics, and Native American Indians. It's not for the whole world. Those people are heathens walking around up in there. Uh, so this is Book of Proverbs, chapter three, verse five. It says, "Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding." So there's only one understanding. That is the new song that we're singing right now, saying that the children of Israel are the lost 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, are, yeah, we're saying that the, the Negro, the Hispanics, and Native American Indians are the lost 12 tribes of Israel. All the other nations are heathens, and they will go under subjection when the Lord returns to destroy this wicked kingdom that blaspheme the name of the Lord and pr promote all these lies. Okay? And like the lady said, you can't please everybody. You better be worried about pleasing the Lord, lady, because she's a so-called Israelite too, I believe. All right? It's not about pleasing no people. It's about pleasing the Lord. What does the scripture say? 
Should we, uh, we should fear the fear God rather than man, right? So we please the Lord rather than man. Okay, that's it, y'all. We're going to wrap it up. Shalom.